Hello, my name is Cynthia, and welcome to my FlossTube channel. I'm happy to be here with you today to share my stitching, some previous finishes, four new finishes, and several Christmas whips that you haven't seen in a while. It's Thursday, December 2nd, 2021, and I'm here in Fort Worth, Texas on a bright sunny day. I have a quiet house for a very limited time, so I'll try to talk quickly. I may have some new bags under my eyes. Hopefully you can't tell because my son was sick last night and his dad has him at the doctor this morning, so say a little prayer for Elijah. He has a very sore ear, but I think he'll be okay. I wanted to start with, like I said, some previous finishes, and I believe all of these are free. I had forgotten to check on the Brenda Gervais Sal from last year. Let me show you, it's right here. I use this red little gate um, that I got on Zoo Lily. It's an online boutique, and I use it for Patriotic and Christmas. And I plan to use it for a Pineberry Farm piece as well. It's very handy for finishing. It's just a little um, clip-on gate. And I have seen these um, hauled by other floss tubers that find them in boutiques. But I got mine from Zoo Lily for under $10 or $12. It was a really good, really good deal. It comes in a larger size too, but I haven't seen it in a while. So just keep an eye out in the primitive section. I did add a little buffalo check bow, and I need to kind of nestle that in better, but this was a fun free stitch along by Brenda Gervais last year on her blog. And I believe it was called the Mary and Minty Cell. My friend Merritt Crawford, hi Merritt, told me about it and we stitched it together, I think, didn't we Merritt? Um, and I didn't do the top border. I believe there was another um, candy cane border up at the top, but I wanted this to be pretty primitive. I just kind of hem stitched it and tacked it on this wool felt. And I thought it was really fun. I didn't use the called for colors either, but he's standing on Rudolph's back and Santa's super cute. So there's the Mary and Minty Sal, and I believe it's still free on her blog. I'll try to link it below if it is. The other one that is free from my friend Melissa at Pinker and Pumpkin Quilting Blogspot. She posts on Instagram freebies all the time. There are so many I want to do for Melissa. I can probably do a whole year of Melissa's stuff, but this one I picked up last year. I, again, I think it was something we did together, wasn't it, Merritt? <laughs> um, maybe I'm remembering that incorrectly, but this was a little Santa vintage mug, and I thought he looked cute in the kitchen. So he has um, a lot of my own choices of colors. I don't think I used any of the called for. I just got greens and reds, and then um, he has part of the border left off. I know uh, Melissa's design went all the way down, but I was in a little bit of a rush and I thought, I don't think it's going to be that big a deal. And this polka dot fabric, the petty point is um, a little bit distracting anyway. So I didn't want too much going on, but he's really cute. And I just have this wooden snowflake magneted on from um, Joann's, I believe. I was going to paint it, but I kind of liked it in the raw state. So something different than a bow, just for a change up. And then the last one had a um, cautionary tail attached. Always use really good glue on your cross stitch that goes over your kitchen sink. 
She has a little bit of a green cast on her. I use Dawn dish soap because this little elf freebie by Barbara Anna Designs landed in a pan soaking with spaghetti sauce. She was orange, literally. And my, my husband said, is this your cross stitch soaking in the spaghetti pan? And I went, no, <laughs> this was a fun, quick stitch, but it did take some time. I mean, it's got a lot of color changes and lots of cute detail that I think I had to redo that. No, I didn't. I didn't have to redo anything. Probably should have, but when I had, I had over dyed this, um, I tried to darken this green Ada my sister-in-law gave me. And so that green dye all came out. It wasn't the over dyed, it wasn't the flosses. It was the fabric, but I think it's looking pretty good. You can see the cast a little bit, but not as bad as it was, not even close. But that is on a, it's some kind of free website that has a lot of different um, stitches. I think it's old, um, but Barbara Anna is featured there pretty prominently. And I think it's called like Cyber Stitchers. I've linked it before, but there's the little Barbara Anna. I think it's called, a, it has words. It says something like everybody needs a little help, which I did like, but I didn't, didn't stitch. So that stays on that ceiling tin that I've put snowmen and all kinds of different things on and it's just magneted and so is the bow. So super simple if you ever find a ceiling tile at, this came from the Goodwill, 329, what a deal. Um, snatch it up, it's fun for stitching. And the other ones I wanted to show you are new finishes that I was able to do over the last few days, few weeks since we spoke last. Um, this one isn't fully, fully finished, but it is from the front. This is a gift for my youngest daughter and I thought it was just the cutest little design with the um, Santa Claus pun and the crab. So I um, didn't use any that called for by M. Kissa Designs. This is on Etsy, I'll link it below. I just had a Victorian motto that I thought was a cute pink. And then I think that's another Victorian motto purple and just a red DMC. So it only takes like five colors, maybe four, and it's super quick. But I'm going to do another one of these. Um, I'm going to have to because I can't. I have three for my kids except um, Elijah. So I have to do one for him. And I'm going to use like a checked fabric and make it blue instead of purple. But the back isn't quite finished. I have to put my felt on the back. But I was in a rush. And I kind of copied Michelle McGraw's admiring her bows on um, her latest. I think they were Lizzie Kate's. Were they Lizzie Cates or Prairie Schoolers? But I liked the bows at the top. No, they were um, Priscilla and Chelsea's finishes. I liked that bow at the top, so I copied that. And I always put a bell if I can. So just some polka dot fabric. Cute for a little nine-year-old or eight-year-old girl. Is she eight or nine? Gosh, I think she's nine. <laughs> and then this one was a um, gift from my friend Frankie, the Wicked Stepmother. She sent the entire pattern. I don't have it over here. I showed it in uh, my last regular floss tube. And I actually was giving this fabric or this pattern away, two copies, Frankie was, by email. The um, design has, I think, seven or eight ornaments and they're really quick to stitch. I haven't had a lot of experience with back stitch. I can see a little bit of carrying over there, but that's okay. Um, but I really enjoyed doing it and I thought it looked very um, kind of classy. I really like that, Frankie. And um, it has a little grouping of bells at the top that I've never done before. I just took my needle and kind of stacked on a bunch of bells from Hobby Lobby in the Christmas section. They're half price. So I think they're only like $2 for a whole bag of these little jingle bells. And since it says sleigh bells ring. And I did get this one finished on the back. I used um, matte board that I traced. This is my um, oatmeal canister and this is my protein powder canister. So, and then the oatmeal canister. So it just worked out perfectly. In fact, I did the same thing, same size for this one. So they're on, I believe it's 28 count. It might be 32, but I think it's 28. So they're pretty big. I probably would have preferred them on 32, but it's just what I had. So they're kind of big and I have a really big Christmas tree this year. So they're going to work out fine. And they actually, I have them on a smaller tree, but they still look really cute. And I'll show a picture of what this one looks like on the tree here. The last two finishes that I wanted to share are some favorites. This one might need another magnet because I was having a little bit of trouble, but this is my Santa 
Dove and the Key by Brenda, I mean by Barbara Anna Designs. I showed it in my last um, floss tube, but it wasn't completely finished. And this one was a struggle for me. I felt like um, in the past, I have a lot of blue cross stitch and kind of those aqua colors. I was going to go with like a gray polka dot, but since I have more of the browns in this room now with my changes that I made, I wanted it to coordinate better with that. So I used a tan quilt fabric that I got on a D stash and I used a little trim around the edge from Hobby Lobby. It's just a little dot trim. It's not really pom pom, but it's kind of that effect. It's smaller though. So I, I like it better. Yeah, see, it's not staying straight. I'm going to need to get another magnet on there, but the other one I had was so strong that I couldn't get it off. So I thought I better not use that one. So I just have one kind of smaller magnet, but I'll get another magnet on there and I'll, I'll put a little alligator clip on the back. This was a $2.49 tray from Goodwill. <laughs> and I thought that's going to be perfect. I really like it. And that bow, I try to kind of mix high and low. I, I like that um, contrast. This is sorry silk with jute twine. So it kind of hits the middle. I have more of a natural kind of quality and then I have, you know, the silk. So, and the shiny silver. It's just really pretty. That's such a pretty design. I got it on Creative Poppy. It's a um, online source for Barbara Anna patterns. So I think I've seen this on 123 Stitch as well. And I used mostly called for colors. The color um, threads are in my last regular floss tube. If you want to check that out, I, I did go in and list those. I know I use the Dinky Dye Silk and Natural, so that bird really stands out well. But that's really pretty. And um, I had a lot of questions over my last two videos. I'll try to address them as they come up. One was, can you please list the threads on this? And I had forgotten, so I went back and fixed that. And the other was, you know, what is the silk you use? What is the silk you use? I get that question over and over. So what I've decided to do, um, this is Sari Silk, S-A-R-I. I have a community post. I don't think people access this feature very often on YouTube, or maybe they don't realize it's there. But when you go to my channel, if you have a question about something, I'm going to start an FAQ kind of posting on there. I don't know if I can group them together, but it, there's not very many posts on there. So if you go to my community tab, I'll have an FAQ section or I'll, I'll headline the, the pin as FAQ and I'll list, you know, what is Sorry Silk? Where do I get it? Um, a lot of the other questions I get about, you know, how to... Um, or where something's from. Just if I get a question over and over, I'm going to try to list it in that community tab. So if you have a question and you're newer to my channel, because I've increased my subscribers, thank you so much for um, supporting my whip parade so well. I think I timed that very um, luckily with the break. We had over 15,000 people watch that whip parade, which blew my mind. I thought, oh, this video is so long. Nobody's going to want to watch this. But thank you very much for all your kind comments and all the new uh, stitching friends that came to join our channel. So if you're new, I wanted you to have a, a resource to check back because obviously you don't want to look over two years of videos to find what you're looking for. Hopefully that will be helpful. And if you do have a question, always ask it below in the comments. That's fine. Um, but I will try to refer you back to that community tab if it's one that's asked over and over. So that one was um, just a fully finish that you've already seen the finish on. And then this one you haven't seen at all yet. I did get Sally Spencer done. I have worked on this. I was trying to remember when I started it. I think it was this year. It might have been last, but I didn't work on it very much until I know I started working on it when my mom was sick. So I'm going to kind of remember that a little bit, but it does kind of um, memorialize my family of origin. And thank you all for your support when I shared that comment that was so harsh. Um, I did think back. It may have sounded like I was trying to be deceitful in some way because I said, I'll pretend that I stitched this in 84, but I didn't mean it like that. Obviously, you know, I was going to put on the back that I stitched it in 2021. And I think we just need to give each other the benefit of the doubt and don't assume that people have deceitful motives or, you know, it was just one of those things. So thank you for really coming behind me and saying, stitch what you want, stitch it the way you like. And um, I encourage you to do the same. I had some people say, you've encouraged me to personalize my pieces. I think it makes them more meaningful to your family. It makes them more meaningful to you. And it's just a better experience. So this isn't a reproduction. It's an original design by Birds of a Feather. And the um, 
Sally Spencer, you know, was just a random person. So this says Cindy Herbal, the name I went by in one year of elementary. I am now Cynthia and prefer that. <laughs> but this tag I said I was going to put on here is the little name tag I made in Girl Scouts that year. And someone um, commented that this phone was from the phone company, that she had some as well from her mother who worked for the phone company, which thank you so much for letting me know that. That had to be where that came from. My mom worked for the phone company from 1960. 66. Um, she started there when she was 17 and had over the years um, retired from Southwestern Bell. So that must have been where that came from. It made it more meaningful. And I did use it for my Barbies too. I remembered that. <laughs> I'd forgotten. So there's my little phone and my name and it has my brother, my initial, let me get up a little closer, and my dad. So it was very tight in this frame. I had it from Goodwill, but um, I thought it looked fine and it didn't quite cut off the bird so it's just right up against it and I didn't use the cold for colors I sort of wish I had um I came up with what I had in stock this um buckeyed scarlet was called for but the others weren't this banker's gray I just had and I thought you know if you want to have a red vine with gray leaves this will work and then I used a threadworks color called spiced peach it has some nice variegation to it, so it worked out pretty well. And there's not a ton of that color in the design. And then I just used Ecru and 504. So I actually would encourage you, though, I wish my... Um, oh, and I stitched every bit of carriage black. <laughs> so I had a little tag here that says carriage black. The dark color I wish were darker. It comes out pretty good on camera. But in, per in person, it's a little bit almost bluish, and I would like it to be the original color, which is Black Crow, which still has blue in it, but it's much darker. I think the um, DMC sub is 310, and I think I would have liked that contrast better, but it looks good. It looks especially good on camera. So this is just some 32 count fabric that I got. Um, I may have swapped it from another pattern I had kitted, and it might be Lakeside, but I think it's something I dyed myself. So I'm not saying that, you know, um, Hobby Lobby is on the same level as Lakeside, but I'm not as particular about my linen. I can stitch on anything. So <laughs> it's just something I had uh, repurposed from another chart I had because when I got this chart from Olivia, thank you so much, Olivia, Pumpkin Hollow Quilts shared it. Um, I was just ready to start it. So I grabbed what I had and it worked out pretty well. The white does kind of ghost out a little bit, but that makes it look more antique. So on this piece, I like it. And you can definitely see the flowers fine. So that is a fun pattern. The um, chart is going on to an Instagram friend who got um, swindled out of paying kind of a high price for a fake chart. So I told her, I will send that to you. So I, I always share out of print charts. I apologize that I can't share it with more. But if you just keep your eyes and ears open. And I like to share out of print charts knowing that that, um, you know, you reap what you sow, goodness comes back to you when you do that. So thank you, Olivia, for sharing that with me. It's going to go on to um, a friend on Instagram and she's going to pass it to another stitcher. So that gift will keep going instead of being gouged on eBay. So that's a good thing. I have um, a little bit of, no, I just have one piece of haul. Let me show you that because um, I have plans to do some kidding for some a Christmas gift, but I haven't purchased that. I did get one Black Friday piece though that I've never seen before, and I wanted to show it because it's still on sale. This is Fractor Flowers and Birds by Little Fox Stitching. I believe it's a um, company from overseas. I can't remember where, it might be Ukraine. But this chart I thought was beautiful. It only has like five colors, is that right? No, eight colors. And I want to do it in overdyed, so. It's in my Fractor Bird lineup. <laughs> I have um, maybe another Fractor Bird for sure. I want to do the Autumn Fractor Bird by Paulette Stewart. And then this one I thought was beautiful. It's big. It's bigger than I thought. It's um, 159 by 187. So there's quite a bit of stitching, but it's not horrible. And I just think it's beautiful. And the best part was this pattern is only regular price to six dollars and i got it for two dollars and 40 cents on black friday so and i think it's still on sale for three dollars but they have some really pretty patterns i'll try to link that um 
Etsy shop below. I had never seen it before. It just popped up in my recommendations. So they must know what I like. So that's the only haul I have, but let me get these other things put away and I'll show you my Christmas whips and some um, pieces. Uh, I did start one Christmas piece after I finished Santa Dove and Key, and then I have um, several from last year. So let me get this out and I'll be right back. Okay, just a few more things to show you. I had um, meant to say, I think I started to say and didn't finish my thought that the giveaway winner of mistletoe kisses and i did find the chart here's um, frankie's chart for six ornaments and i did change the color i forgot to say that it's charted for green and like a kind of salmon red and a garnet and i used black garnet and another red so it's pretty similar but that's the difference and she used like it looks like a wooden ornament with some garland around it. So either way, just a different take on it. I forgot to say, um, when I print things on the screen, it's probably because I forgot to say it and I try to add it in. And I imagine people are probably stitching and they don't look up. So um, Allison Norris and Rachel Q stitches or Rachel O stitches, I couldn't read it. Um, both won this um, design and hadn't heard from them as of, I checked yesterday, yesterday, excuse me, got the hiccups. I checked yesterday. So if Allison Norris or Rachel Q Stitches is watching, please um, email me at my email below so that Frankie can send over this free pattern for you. If I don't hear from you by the middle of December, I'll go ahead and draw again and then um, you can stitch it for next year. I'd hope to have it announced during my whip parade so that you would have time, but I understand if I um, maybe just put that on the screen and it was missed. So I wanted to say Allison Norris and Rachel Q Stitches. Just a little bit of housekeeping there. And then um, here are my whips that I have for Christmas. Not all of them will get attention, but this one will. This is my um, Christmas at Hollyberry Farm. I was unrealistic thinking I could get this done. I, I don't know if I'm going to, but I think it'll stay in my rotation as my Hollyberry extra large. And um, I'll just keep going on it because it's so fun to stitch. I did move over since you saw it last and start this urn beside the house with the flowers. That part, um, this part of the stitching is much lighter. So there's the urn with the flowers. And they have a center that is called Lexington Green, which I don't have. And um, I don't know why I didn't pull it when I was looking, but Lexington Green is a difficult color to pin down. It's kind of a bluey gray green. So I was thinking I might pick something else. I might even make that just like a really, really pale kind of peachy color. It's not really going to show up much, but I didn't really want a green center to that flower. So we'll see. And I know Lexington green has changed quite a bit since probably this was stitched, but the roof is almost done. I was working on that. And then I was trying to get this fence, which is very long. It doesn't look like that much stitching, but it's very long. I was trying to get over there so I could work up. I think that's a dog. And then I started that. So, and then there's just some fuzz. But here's the top and the bottom, so I just need to work my way over and back. And I think I'm going to keep this in my rotation and just work on it as much as I can. I have a few other pieces. Um, I have a mystery stitch that I'm, or a, a secret stitch that I'm still working on for my friend Kristen. And then I have um, a guild piece. Um, Sally Spencer was on my guild contract, so I got three out of four. I really want to finish that fourth piece, but um, it just depends on how close I get. So I will let you know how Shepherd Sampler comes. I showed you that in my whip parade. I'm not going to get it out again. But here's another um, Lizzie Kate Mary String. These are the Christmas and winter whips that I did not show in my whip parade because I knew that I would be showing them in this video. So this is just a super quick Mary String. I think it's a snippet pattern. And I started it last year and got a little over halfway and just quit. But I'll finish this one. I'm pretty sure it's just on a scrap of Ada that I dyed myself with some um, ginger. Well, I wanted it to look kind of gingerbready, so it's probably tan writ dye. And it got really dark on the back, but I used this side because it was lighter. So I have a board to finish that on from Hobby Lobby. It's painted. It's ready. I just didn't get to it last year. And if I get that one finished, I did want to do this one for my elf window to go with my Barbara Anna elf. I don't think I'll finish this as a bag. I think I'll do it as a little square on a um, drawer or something. But aren't those elves so cute? I thought that looked a little bit like those birds of a feather Santas, in fact. 
So there um, are some Lizzie Kate plans. I love Lizzie Kate. And then I love this design too. This is a new start. After Santa Deb and Key, I let myself start this one because I've had it for, this is the second year and I've really wanted to start it. I think it is beautiful in a very unique and artistic way. It's called Good Day Sire Christmas and it's spelled in, I guess, Old English. The designer is from Scotland, I believe. She has a UK address, but I'm pretty sure she's from Scotland. And she talks about how the idea of Santa's domestic life was um, her inspiration. You can see his little clothesline of um, his suit hanging. So the lettering is over one, and I think the Santa's clothes are not, but look at the um, Quaker snowflake at the top. Isn't that pretty? So I've got a very small start on this. I was doing some of the over one while I was stitching with my friends and realized I can't do over one while I'm talking with someone else. So I had to kind of punt on that, but this little house has got a start on it. It's very small. Here's his little house and his um, laundry line and then the leaves. I'm using the colors that I had from Santa the Dove and the Key. They were just real handy. So it's kind of a prim, you know, uh, palette. So I thought that would be perfect for those trees and Santa's suit. This red is thirty-seven seventy-seven. I had someone ask me about Santa and the Dove and the Key. That's a good terracotta red and just some browns and um, a little softer red there for the holly berries. So I hope to get a lot of good work done on this. I probably won't get it done this year, but I wanted to start it kind of as a reward for some of all these, or for finishing some of these bigger pieces like All Creatures and Sally Spencer. The other start I had, which I don't think I've shown you yet. I know I've shown you the pattern. I did pick up Let It Snow Bungalow. I'm changing the colors just a little bit on this, but I got the Turkish red for the house because I thought it was really pretty. I'm changing the green and I'm changing the blues, but it'll go up all winter on my turquoise shutter. And I love this basalt fabric. Oh, my needles loose. No, it's okay. This basalt fabric to me looked like a snowstorm at night. So I'm cheating out of some of the Smyrna crosses not having to do that. But what I found out was as I'm stitching this um, ribbon, which isn't a huge element, it's okay. Um, this is supposed to be unstitched. And I had several spots where the white was just blobbing through there. And so you can see here. So I did use 310 and fill that in. I might have used a charcoal instead of 310, but it's okay. I think it looks good. And this blue is a called for huckleberry, this light blue. It's a really pretty floss. Look how it variegates. And then the dark blue was an older one I had from um, Hand Dyed by Rolanda. It's just called 112. Isn't that pretty? So I'm gonna use like some kind of sea blue and aqua colors and I think it'll look really pretty. I have a little bit of a problem here with this snowflake. <laughs> I started counting and snowflakes have to be right. You know, they have to be symmetrical. And as I was doing the snowflake, I thought, oh no, it's not on the right place in the ribbon, which may mean the rest of that design is not correct. And I'm not pulling that snowflake out. That took me a while. <laughs> so I'm just going to have to fudge that little snowflake in the ribbon. It's a little bit tricky, the counting is, but you just have to keep looking at, I've noticed as you're doing a lot of these um, chalkboard homes, you really have to just keep your eye on, you know, these are symmetrical. So always be looking as <laughs> this matching because everything you stitch over here, you just have to stitch in reverse. So if you keep your eyes on it, it's not that hard. And I think it's really cute. So, and the top design, I was planning on doing that too, the winter. I like that especially. So we'll see how that goes. I want to try to divide it up into thirds and maybe get it done this, this season. But if not, I'll move on to the Easter one and around March and just get done what I can. So that was a new start. Oh, here's that huckleberry. I hadn't used this floss before. I thought it was really pretty. It has some very snowy vibes going. And then I have a nativity that is hiding. Oh, I didn't pull them all out of my bag. Hang on a second. Sorry, I thought I was ready and I'm not. This nativity berry I started um, last year. Sorry, it's upside down. And I love it, but it was tricky to count. I was having to highlight. Here's where I am. Um, I was having to highlight the uh, colors as I was stitching Mary and Joseph. And then there's an angel at the top and baby Jesus is coming in there. But I think I could probably get this one done. And I kind of had an idea to do a series of those colors um, 
with some Paulette Stewart freebie. She has some that talk about, um, you know, the world lay in hope or how does it, anyway, I can't remember, but she has some that kind of deal with the um, story of Jesus. And so I thought this would be a cute display to do this strawberry and then those two freebies from Paulette and sort of these same colors, like this I dyed myself and it's not quite the color of Erica's, but I do always more go toward turquoise or teal. So I think I used um, teal writ dye. So that'll be a really pretty berry. And it's just Ada. I don't think it's gonna be sized right. It might be 16 count and it will, but I'll have to be really careful to watch the template and make sure it fits. If you change what she calls for, then her template may or may not work for you. And then this one I started, um, I've done a lot of the medleys. You can kind of see the winter medley over here. I changed it to teal. Um, and I just think they're really cute. These Heart and Hand by Cecilia Turner. Um, here's the cardstock. I got it on eBay for a couple bucks. And I am going to change this um, girl right here to a little row of gingerbread people. I didn't really care for the angel as much. But the design is really cute, like the Santa hat. So, And I also was changing the border. It's just green, and I'm doing it red and white striped like a peppermint. So I do have some gingerbread and stuff with my elves. And so all I have done is the start of that border. This was a piece I cut off because I didn't like it. Um, it's just some even weave from Hobby Lobby that I dipped in coffee and tea, I think. This is really old fabric. But there's the start of that, and they're real quick. So... Hopefully I'll get some time to work on that Christmas medley. I, I don't know if I'll put it on that um, little plaque that I got from uh, the Goodwill or if I'll put it on a different finish in my kitchen window because it goes more with my kitchen stuff. And then I have, let's see, an ornament um, project that I've shown before, but it's been a while. I kind of stalled out on it because my goal was to have um, four, and I might need to look at this, my goal was to have four of these done for my contract with my guild. And this is a free pattern that I'm chunking on the floor from Paulette Stewart. I love her freebies. She's very generous. It's called the 12 Days of Christmas. And it's just a big sampler that some people do as one piece and other people do as individual ornaments. I'm doing it as individual ornaments. I'm trying to find day one. Here it is first day. That is what it looks like in the chart. I don't have a picture of it. I don't think, but like I said, people do it different ways. I am using inspiration from Kathy Hoverman's hands-on design to kind of mimic these designs, these um, red ornaments done on, I think that's the Week Star Works red. Um, I know the name of that, but it's not coming to my mind. It's okay, Dahlia. <laughs> a bus just came by and woke her up or a truck but anyway I had a goal to do four of these and there may be a few more details I dyed this fabric myself and I love it I use scarlet and cocoa writ dye I had to soak it a really long time I will tell you when you're dyeing red fabric or black some of those colors um they want to go pink you want to just you it wants to end up just being a hot pink which is what I started out with so I may have used some vinegar to soak this fabric. That kind of acts as a um, conditioner to kind of open up the fibers. And then I got what I wanted. So it's just a beautiful fabric. And I'm using my own colors. Um, she calls for like a red, a green, and a gold. But I'm using Whiskey by Weeks Dye Works. And then that's a red um, from Threadworks. And a white. I don't remember if I'm using the silk or not, but yeah, I still have a little bit of work to do. I'm glad I looked at this because this was on my Magic to have four done. So I'm going to finish that last bird and the snowflakes and I'll be working on these each month. I think it'll be so pretty on my tree and I want to do a um, 12 days tree by um, doing a couple of these series. I want to do the Satsuma Street series. And I also want to do those felt crafts um, that you sew together, the little figurines. And um, I want to do one set for each of my four kids. So I'll have this one and I'll have the Satsuma and I'll have the felt one. And there's another one by Prairie Schooler that I'd love to hunt down if I can find it. So I'll have four different sets for my kids. And I've just always loved this song. 
So it's a really old song. It's even older than I thought. It comes from the 1700s. I was looking that up the other day and I hadn't realized that. Looks like my uh, noise factor is gonna go up here. I have some construction going on next door, which I'm not happy about. Oh, and the other color is um, chives and I thought I used the Threadworks. I did. This is the Threadworks um, that I love. I use that on a lot of things. So that is all I had to show you today, I believe. I'm going to be working on my Hawker and Hollow Block 8. I'm going to be trying to finish my Shepherd Sampler as I um, look to complete all of the contracted items with my guild. And we'll see how much I get done on Hollyberry Farm and on any of these other whips. So I will update you in a couple of weeks. Again, thank you so much for your support of my channel. Thank you for coming and spending time with me and for being so kind. We got through Thanksgiving um, with a little bit of a, um, just kind of a cloud over the day. I did cry uh, every day for several days and coming back to see my mom's house was the hardest. Um, I hadn't been there since the funeral. So walking in just felt so wrong for her not to be there, but her um, presence was so strong and all the love that she had for her home was comforting. Um, and so I continue to just try to give myself grace and it will sneak up on me the grief sometimes when I see things that I wanna call her about or think she would like and, and I realize I can't call her. Um, it hits like a knife in the chest, but that's, that's the way grief is. So if you're going through a similar um, season, which I know a lot of you are. I've had a lot of comments from people who've also lost their moms and their sisters and, and loved ones. Um, just um, hang in there and I'll be thinking of you as well and praying for you if you would um, continue to pray for me. Thank you so much. As I end all of my videos in the book of Psalm chapter 90 verse 17, it says, may the favor of the Lord our God be upon us and establish the work of our hands. I'll see you in a couple weeks.